Well, kia ora. I'm Laura Fogg Rogers, and um, I research science communication and public engagement with research. Previously, I worked at the Centre for Brain Research at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, which is where this research came from. And I'm going to talk about the neuroscience, art, and therapy of music, or more specifically, um, choral singing therapy, which is a programme of uh, song singing and vocal exercises we developed for people with communication difficulties for, uh, from brain disease. And some of those communication difficulties are aphasia. You may wonder why I have Spartacus here. Well, he's the um, actor Kirk Douglas, who had a stroke in 1996 and has written about his battles with aphasia. Now, aphasia is a brain condition where the area of the brain which controls speech, uh, broker's area, um, can, it, it dies in a stroke. And so people can understand the words coming in, but they can't assemble them, they can't get them out which is obviously horrifically frustrating for people um, as they can't communicate. Um, there's other neurological conditions like Parkinson's disease, which Muhammad Ali has. And 90% um, of people have voice and uh, expression difficulties with a whispery voice, um, hoarse, stilted, uh, low expression, and again, relationship problems. And the amazing thing about singing is it gives people a voice. Um, so it's, it's quite miraculous when you see people who can't speak or can speak very little singing solos um, in choral concerts. And it's a, a, a crazy quirk of the brain that that can happen because singing is musical speaking. Um, so what the imaging data shows that our speech and singing networks overlap, but crucially, the singing networks cover more of the brain so that there's more to preserve if you have a stroke. And this means it could be useful therapeutically um, for the overlap and repetition that's involved. And in fact, some imaging studies with singing uh, therapies have shown brain plasticity. So the brain is changing and, and uh, readapting to give us uh, more use back rehabilitation. Singing has also been investigated for mood, for breathing, for well-being, with stroke, Parkinson's. So it's um, a very exciting scientific uh, therapy involving neuroscience. But of course, singing is also an art. We've got Gareth Malone here, um, the Army Wives Choir. And um, choral singing is suddenly a very glamorous activity to involve with. There's choral networks starting up all over the country, people getting involved. And um, singing brings joy, that's why. It makes you feel good. We're meant to sing. It's um, in all human societies, it's innate. It's, we do it with babies from birth. And it makes people feel good. There's so much research showing it improves mood, quality of life, well-being for so many different populations. And that's the science and the art of singing. It connects on a micro level in the brain, but it also connects on a macro level between people in communities. It brings us together. And so in New Zealand, we developed our protocol with the Celebration Choir. Um, where we, we developed a program of voice um, exercises, song singing appropriate for their age group, kind of 60 to 80 year olds. A social break was very important. And they started saying, we're seeing amazing things here. Please, will you do some research with us? And so we developed our feasibility study, Spicato, which is a musical term. Um, it stands for Stroke and Parkinson's, Investigating Community Choirs and Therapeutic Outcomes. And we brought together a really multidisciplinary team for this study. Over 12 weeks, baseline and endpoint measures, looking at well-being, speech and language, um, and their own self-reported um, outcomes as well. And what did we find? Well, our choir participants, who had been in the choir for two years, had significantly higher quality of life and self-efficacy than the norm. And they also showed improvements in voice-related quality of life and in social participation. Um, so it was really uh, interesting, the, those quantitative results, but the qualitative results that people gave us as well, so that they loved it, they looked forward to it, it was fun, it improved their mood, it really benefited them. Um, they also found uh, for people with stroke, potentially, that it was um, bringing back their language for people with Parkinson's, it was maintaining their voice. And it was a community. People uh, connected, it wasn't just about the therapy, it was about being together, meeting other people, feeling like you're doing something normal again, which is really important. And our participants, um, we developed a research song as well, a novel way of reporting the outcomes. Um, and it's sung here to the, uh, the, tune, uh, the tune of We're on our way to the freedom land, canon language is a, a folk song. Um, so I'll end with um, So we all love the celebration choir. <laughs>